So what's the answer? Hmm. Oh, it's Amy Winehouse and rehab. <laughs> Sounds like rehab to me. You know, to tell someone that they're going to follow an old paradigm now and just simply say, oh, come on. What I'm going to do is just give you a diet. That's, that's like walking up to someone who is a cocaine head and basically saying, well, we're going to put you on a, um, a diet of moderation. Just a little cocaine in the morning, a little bit more at, at lunchtime. Be careful at night now. It's ridiculous. We need a brand new paradigm. And that paradigm has to happen now. There was an old paradigm, we called it ELM. And ELM was eat less, move more. I call that a KGO, keen grasp of the obvious. I mean, really, seriously. Now, the thing is, it's all technical. There's no mind involved. Anybody can figure out how to eat less and move more, and it doesn't work anyway for a lot of other reasons that are psychosociological, economical, it just goes on and on, cultural. So many factors involved here. However, we may have an answer. Because one of the things that you have to understand as a core to really solving this problem is true for all the addictive tendencies we have. We're addicted to our lifestyles. Food's just a piece of the action. For that matter, it was a consequence of so many of the other addictive tendencies we have. We're hooked on funky relationships. We're hooked on people, places, and things that enable all of this. We're comfortable and familiar with it all. Why? It's the knee-jerk place to go when we're stressed. Stress is the Achilles heel of all addiction, after all. Stress resilience is the goal. I like to call it adapt and adjust. And because I write books and I like to make things up as I go along, <laughs> I made a verb. I call it A-squaring it. I want to A-square it through the day. Go ahead, I'm going to grow hair on my chest. Give me something tough. I'm going to adapt and adjust. Wow, that's pretty powerful. But how do you do all of that? Through epigenetics. Epigenetics is the most powerful new scientific finding that we have so far, thus far, in this century. Probably for quite some time to come. DNA is no longer destiny. There are certain genes that are not going to be changed. I'm five foot nine, nothing's changing there. I've got the blue eyes, nothing's changing there. We're not going to the hair place. So, <laughs> why do you laugh so hard? <laughs> Ladies, support me, please. So instead, what you have to understand is every thought, every mouthful, every step changes gene expression and it alters your destiny every single time, nanosecond by nanosecond. You see, I'm saving your life. You're laughing. Joy is wonderful. Your genes are loving every moment of it. Those little script writers around each of the genes, the histones, are saying, yes, we like laughter. Let's therefore write a script for that gene. And that gene, therefore, will communicate with the rest of the body in a very positive way. Let's boost immune function. <gasps> no, she's headed for a Twinkie. No, don't do that, please. And then, of course, the histones will have to change the entire message. Kill the immune system. <laughs> Flood it with allergic reactions to the weird thing that just came into her body. You know, and it goes on and on. Your choice, your life. You imprint. You empower. You write your own life script. That's extraordinary. You can dampen funky genes. You can enhance marvelous genes. And here's a huge finding. We pass our epigenetic markers, our imprints, to our children. We never knew that. We never really fully appreciated that. But we do. We can either gift or condemn them by our very lifestyle choices. And this is what epigenetics is all about. Extraordinarily empowering if we use it the right way. So I decided to play a little game. I said, hmm, I like mind, mouth, and muscle. I'm an integrative person, and the older I get, the more I alliterate. So mind, mouth, and muscle. Again with the laughter already. 
So the, the mouth and the muscle thing, you know, eat less, move more. Eat whole foods. If it's made by a plant, eat it. If it's made in a plant, run. If you move your body, and I don't mean the Olympics here, if you just move your body every day, you know, you're nourishing it, but you're also doing something else, you're playing with your genes. We found that if you take the most toxic gene on the planet for obesity, it's called the FTO gene, and you do nothing more than walk if you bear that gene, just walk on a regularized basis, you can dampen that gene's expression by 40%. Now, what if you added some wonderful nutritional you know, additions, some healthy lifestyle, on top of which, let's do something really radical. Let's add the mind. <laughs> I mean, you're not robots here. What happened to the mind? So I thought to myself, hmm, food addi So since it's so new, I decided to do a little pilot project. I decided to say, how am I gonna use the mind? I have to repair the prefrontal cortex. I, we gotta get those dopamine receptors rebuilt. Of course, healthy lifestyle is gonna do that. But what about that prefrontal cortex? The smarty pants part of the brain is hurting here. So I decided to take meditation. In this case, transcendental meditation. And I decided to do the very first pilot of its kind. And in this pilot, this is what we did. For a period of eight weeks, I took a cohort of people who were brand new TMers who also, at the same time, were validated by the Yale scale as food addicted. And flash forward, this was an early preliminary finding the two Ps emerged. Now, mind you, no one had ever done this before, so as a scientist, I just sat back and said, I wonder what's gonna happen. <laughs> Great science happens this way. The two Ps, the first one was, every single subject said the same thing. For the first time in their life, there was no knee jerk. When they were tempted with the 300,000 cues that hit you from the moment you wake up in the morning to eat and do all the rest of it, they hit a pause button. That's the first P. It was a pause. It was like, wait a minute, why am I doing this? This is stupid. What's the consequence? <laughs> and this could have taken seconds, a minute, but for the first time, they stopped, and it was almost effortless. The second thing that happened was they felt more peace throughout the day. And when they did that, they started to examine all of the things they're addicted to in their life. They looked at them all. They said, whoa, wait a minute. What about that relationship? Who needs the sister-in-law? You know, and it goes on and on and on. <laughs> hey, you know, you gotta pitch them to be able to live. They looked at the persons, places, and things that they've surrounded themselves with, and they found that food was a piece of the action, but it exploded into a much bigger thing. Ah, the false fixes were everywhere. That peace gave them a moment to be able to examine this and to do something with it. And over the course of weeks, they found themselves stronger and stronger in their ability to be able to do this. This was amazing. And this is also a pilot that will be the template for a large-scale university study, the first of its kind. So I'm very excited about this. Take your arm, put them out in front of you. Make a fist, tight, very tight. I wanna hear those nails popping. Real tight. That's what it feels like to be addicted to anything, to your thoughts, actions, people, places, and things. Food was just a piece of the action. Feel the pain. That was Renisha a little earlier. Open up. This is Chris in the second video. This is recovery. This is bliss. From bliss indeed, all beings originate. By bliss, they are sustained. Towards bliss, they move. In it, they merge. Now take your left hand, place it over your heart. Your right, over your left. And this is what's gonna get us out of this mess. 
self-compassion and compassion for others. With this enlightenment, this is the dictum. It's a call to arms and legs. It's time for all communities to merge their collective consciousness to reject the false fixed lifestyle. It can be done and it must be done for our sake, the sake of our communities, but most importantly, for the future generations that bear our epigenetic imprint. It's time now to transcend from eat less, move more to empowering and nourishing the mind-body.